So your mom says you want me to read you a story. What'll it be? The Pirate Prince? The Wizard Child? The Beast from the Fairy Tale Land? I don't want you to read me a story. Oh. I want you to tell me a story. Oh. It's gonna be one of those nights. Are you having bad dreams again? Just the last couple nights. Starting at a new school and making new friends can be a little scary. Do you think that might be the problem? Maybe. I think you're adjusting quite well. And I'm proud of you. You know, we moved because it was the best thing for us to do as a family. And sometimes doing the best thing, the right thing, isn't easy. I know. It's okay. I'm making friends. I'm sure you are. So, you want me to tell you a story? How about I tell you about a man who always tries to do the right thing, too? Okay. And I think you know who I'm talking about. But you understand that telling a story is different than reading one. Yes. Because if I read you a story, you can follow along on the page and look at the pictures. But if I tell you a story, you have to use your imagination to fill in the missing parts. I'm good at that. I know. Are you ready? Yes. Close your eyes and listen. Do you hear it? What? The sounds of a big city. Not just any city, though. It's Metropolis. Noisy streets, car horns, people shouting. I hear it. I hear the city. Good. In Metropolis today, the scientists at Star Labs are ready to unveil something very interesting. Now open your eyes. The scientists are holding a press conference to show off the latest information received from a deep space satellite. And they're scurrying about the room, pressing buttons, and turning dials, and scribbling notes on paper. Do you hear all of it? Yes. And one of the scientists speaks. <clears throat> Hello, and thank you all for coming. Hello, and thank you all for coming. We here at Star Labs are pleased to share with you the latest images retrieved from Outpost 1, our deep space probe. Gentlemen! Again, the scientists start turning knobs and dials and pushing buttons. Beep, 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 beep. Large monitors crackle to life, revealing images of stars and planets and asteroids. And one of the reporters in the crowd starts to speak. Excuse me, Clark Kent, Daily Planet. How far has the probe traveled so far? Currently, it's in the neighborhood of Jupiter. As you can see, we have some breathtaking images. Now, Clark was tall, sort of slumpy. He wore glasses and was very polite. At that moment, Clark's attention was fixed on a single tiny element of one of the pictures. As much as he didn't like to interrupt, he had to know. Excuse me again, what is that blur in the corner of that image? Clark was pointing to a shimmering object in the picture. I don't know. Williams, does it appear in any of the other images? Yes, I, I have one here. He types on his computer, and the big screen switches to a larger view of a terrifying spaceship. My God, what is that? A very few things in the world scared Clark Kent, but what he saw chilled him to the bone. <sighs> I have to make a call. Pardon me. Clark ducked out of the room and ran out a door into the alley. No one could witness what he was about to do. Clark Kent's usefulness was over. This looked like a job for Superman! Zipping around the building, Superman enters Star Labs and heads straight for the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. Mr. Kent contacted me and said there's a situation that needs my attention. I don't know what he can mean, Superman. Unless you know what this is. Now the scientist pointed at the image on the screen. Superman took a deep breath. I don't want to cause a panic, but that, sir, is Brainiac. Now everyone in the room stood quietly. They had no idea what Brainiac was. Do you? No, but it must be bad if Superman's scared. It is bad. Superman proceeded to tell everyone how bad. Brainiac is from Krypton, my home world. I've encountered him before. I had hoped that he wouldn't make his way to Earth. What does he want? Knowledge. 
followed by destruction. The room was no longer silent. Everyone started to ask questions. Some of the scientists and technicians started calculating on their computers. Judging by the distance, traveled between the two images, I'd say he's going to be on Earth in less than a week. All right. Alert the government and the military of what you found. There isn't a second to spare. I'll try and stop him. Superman raced out of the room and onto the busy street. Earth was his home ever since his parents sent him away as a child to escape the destruction of their world. And although every day he tried to keep the peace and resolve conflicts, he was not afraid of a fight. But this would be the fight of his life. It wasn't time to say goodbye to his adoptive parents, his friends, or even the woman he loved. He raised an arm and took to the sky. Up, up and away! Faster and faster, Superman flew past the planets of our solar system. Jupiter is huge, but it was just a blur as he raced around it. And outer space is cold and dark and lonely. But Superman was on a mission. And at first, it was just a tiny speck. It became bigger and bigger. Brainiac's ship. Superman thought, no need to knock, and he crashed right through the hole into a monstrous chamber. He looked around. Where was he? Where was Brainiac? It wasn't long before he had an answer. A beam of green light hit him from behind. Ah! Kryptonite! Superman crashed to the floor of the ship, and then he heard the voice. Slow and metallic. Cold and heartless. Greetings, Kal-El. You should not try and stop me. My programming is very specific. I must collect the knowledge of the universe. But you don't need to destroy it. The universe exists in chaos. I will collect all information and bring order out of that chaos. Superman leaps into the air and swings at Brainiac. Brainiac extends an arm and fires the kryptonite laser beam right at the ass on Superman's chest. Superman falls to the floor again. On our previous encounters, you failed to stop me. You have no hope of doing so now. Instead, join me, Kal-El. We will travel the universe together, seeking knowledge. No, Brainiac. I can't let you do this anymore. You've already destroyed too many worlds. It must end here! Very well. It will end. Brainiac raised his arm to fire again, but Superman, faster than a speeding bullet, moves out of the way. He punches Brainiac right in the head. Electricity erupts from him as he falls back. His voice is changing. You cannot stop me. My purpose is not yet complete. Maybe mine is! What does he mean? Superman always knew that fighting for truth, justice, and the American way was his purpose in life. But he soon realized that he needed to help anyone he could who was innocent and needed a hero to defend them. Right now, everyone on Earth was depending on him. He had to stop Brainiac. Even if it meant he would die trying. Wow. Superman smashed everything inside the ship. Brainiac fired mechanical arms at him. Superman blasted them with his laser vision. Explosions tore through the ship. It was coming apart. Brainiac could survive if even the smallest piece of himself remained. Superman pummeled Brainiac. Pieces flew off left and right. Superman fried each one of them with his laser vision. He breathed freezing air on Brainiac's exposed circuitry. Brainiac was slowing down. Superman kept punching. He couldn't let up. The ship was nearly destroyed and all around him. Still they fought. Now Brainiac was a logical being. Even if his logic was twisted and evil. And he knew there was a chance that Superman could defeat him. So he opened a chamber on his chest, exposing a large piece of kryptonite. Tentacle arms latched onto Superman, pinning him against Brainiac. Superman tried to break loose, but he couldn't. The kryptonite was killing him. Goodbye, Kal-El. We will not meet again. <laughs>